I wanted to speak a little bit about something. I'll probably go a little off course. Um, there's several things that's laying on my heart right now. But I felt like this was something that somebody needed to hear. So here we go. Um, I was born and raised in a Christian home. Thank the Lord for my heritage, for my grandparents, and for people around me that were um, believers of the Lord and seen his faithfulness and trusted him more than anything else. Um, and I'm not by any means bashing my upbringing. I'm very thankful for that. But what I am going to hit on is an area that is uh, it could be sensitive to some um, to me, I was taught at a young age, and I was it was almost ingrained in me that as a Christian, we need to be mindful of our words because God is keeping account of every idle word, which that is a scripture in the Bible, but it is taken out of context, much like a lot of the word has been over the years because people use it to push their, their agendas or their point that they're trying to drive home. Um, so back to the idle word. Um, if you are a believer in Jesus and you believe by faith that Jesus saved you, died on a cross and died for you, that puts you in a whole different category than everybody else. Because um, the Bible clearly states that once you become a Jesus follower and you believe, and you've asked him into your life, that you are not who you once were and that you're not underneath the old covenant anymore. The old covenant would have, you know, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. You know, God's wrath came upon you to try to give you correction. And now when Jesus came, he abolished all that. Jesus came and he saves us. Like he's the one true son of God. He came to save us because we needed to save him. Because after all the warnings, all the things that God had done prior to the New Testament, we still didn't get it. We still didn't figure it out. Like we would, we would like God would do something awesome for us, deliver us from something. And we get right back into the very things that, what we were in before that same sin if not worse and then god would have to do something else to try to get our attention but because we weren't listening so i'm so glad that god loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son and god didn't send his only begotten son to condemn us that's what the bible says he said that he sent him into the world to save us so if you follow in jesus you don't have to worry about him keeping account of your words as a Christian. As a Christian, you are covered under the grace of God. If that, that doesn't make sense, well, let me try to break it down. If God, loving his son Jesus so much that he sent him to earth to die for all the sin, cover the sin that was, the sin that isn't yet, and the sin is to come, that means Jesus, he came for a reason. If it was to keep track of all of our words after we follow Jesus... That doesn't make sense. It's like you're going to go to heaven and there's nowhere in scripture this says this. But I'm saying, okay, you get, you know, your last day down here on earth are gone and you end up in heaven before the white, th before the throne of God. And you stand there and he's looking in the book, see if your name's in there. Before he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Or he looks at you and says, I never knew you. That's what the Bible says, the two things he's going to say. He's not going to look at you and say, well, Brett. I really let's before we go getting into the main reason why you're here let's let's go through the categories here of okay well you didn't say this right you didn't do this right you didn't say this but you did say this okay that's a check good point and here's a bad one off this so that kind of abolishes that god's not going to go through a list of do's and don'ts because that would make no sense because the bible says that we can't earn heaven so i just want to let somebody out there that is a christian that is living for god I'm not saying that we shouldn't be mindful of our words, and I'm saying that we should be mindful of our words. We should be wanting not to hurt the Father, and we want to represent Him to the fullest and to the greatest so that people don't get a misrepresentation of who Jesus is or who God is. But what I am doing is I am trying to abolish the lies that hold people down because it's something that is grained and preached and teached that is not, it's not scriptural. So, like, I'm just trying to put some closure maybe to somebody that might be questioning because I've even heard Christians say, and I've been in church services recently. Well, it's been a little bit, but recently where I was sitting in there and they were, they were quote, quoting that scripture verse from the pulpit and saying, you know, we have to be really mindful of every wide word, you know. And I'm like, no, we don't. That's for the people that don't know Jesus. Every person out there that don't know the Lord has to be, they're going to be held accountable for every word, every word they speak. It does, like to me, I don't understand. And I'm not saying that. I got it all right because I don't. There's things that I'm still, God is working on me and he is teaching me new things every day. There's things that I'm just finding out now at 43 years old that I've been taught all my life 
that the Lord has convicted me of that are wrong scripturally because they're pulling one thing out of a scripture verse and they're not using the whole verse or they're using it to twist it just a little bit so they can show you their agenda. And I'm not saying that all people do this, but I'm saying it is happening. The Bible says we could be, we are in the last days, right? Okay, so in the last days, it says there's going to be a lot of false teaching. And I'm not saying that we haven't had false teaching before, and I'm not saying that God's coming back next week. But what I am telling you is that as we prolong this thing and we live this life and as we get older and people come and go, we are getting closer to the Lord's return. So we need to be ready and we need to know what the truth of the Bible is. We need to focus on the real reason why we're here. And the Bible is, there's a lot of simplicity in the gospel. The things that are complex, we are not to dive into. I think we're supposed to leave those things below because there's enough simplicity in the gospel that keeps us all in position and correct standing with God. Knowing the truth and those small things that are so that you can look at a little child and be like, this is what the Bible says. They get it. Those are the things we should maintain and hold close to our hearts because that's what's going to change us and that's going to make us and what the Christ that we follow needs us to be. So the next time somebody says, you know, you really need to be mindful of what you say or like, listen, and I don't even know where this comes from either. There's no scripture that says that the blood of somebody else is going to be on your hands. Like that's not even scriptural either. Like you live a life. According to the word of God, you believe Jesus is your Lord and Savior and you follow after him. Do we not read the Bible? Like, because the beginning verses and the beginning chapters and the beginning books, it was all full of people that were trying to live for God. And they did stuff that is far worse, if not greater things than we've ever done. And they still found Jesus. Did they die for him? Sure. But did they live for him? Yeah. And they struggled. They did things worse than most of us could ever imagine. And then some of us can compare to them. But that doesn't mean God loves us any less. God, don't keep records. Are you kidding me? And really, are we so self-indulged that we have to keep a list down here? Okay, well, I'm going to get this ruby and I'm going to get this crown. You know what? And I'm going to say it. I love God and I love Jesus and I love the Holy Spirit and I love his presence. But when I get to heaven, I'm not worried about a mansion. I'm not worried about the streets of gold. I'm not worried about the crystal sea. I am not worried about my loved ones and I'm not being ugly, but I am. I want to see Jesus. I want to be in his presence. I want to be at the table because you know what happens? The Bible says that we become like him. When we go be changed, we become like him. So like if we're going to become like him, we're going to know everybody. We're going to be omni. We're going to know everything. Omnipresent. We're going to know all these things and we're going to become, we're going to be just like Jesus. Just like God, we're going to be turning into our spiritual being and what God created us to be. So, like, we're not going to be focused on those things. Like, we're going to be focused on God. I don't understand. Even down here on this earth, we are so focused on the wrong things. We are focused. We will worry about what somebody wears to the point where they can't find Jesus or they'll run out the doors. Or because they smoke a cigarette in the parking lot, we'll run them off. Or kids are not in, they don't come to youth but they're out playing on our basketball rim. Oh my goodness, we might want to go get them off of it. Or heaven forbid we actually focus on, hey, we don't care who comes. We don't care what they look like. And we just let them come. And then we speak the word of God, the truth to them. And we allow the Holy Spirit to convict their hearts. And we walk beside them with hearts that are willing to go through the mire and clay. Not just say, well, this is what you need to do. Well, yeah, anybody can do that. It's like people that say, I'm going to pray for you. But the people that really love God, we stop and we pray for them. You, your, your inconveniences of life are not opportunities for you just to say something. They're, they're opportunities for you to do something. Love without actions. Love without actions is worth nothing. You can say you love somebody, but if you're not willing to actually show them you love them, then you're way off base. And I see a lot of people claim to love things. And they ain't really loving them. They're not even loving the people they say they love. So God, help us to know your truth. Help us to know how your gospel is. And how we are to love one another. And how we are to treat one another. There's so much stuff that is going on right now. There could be souls being won by the Lord. But we are so divided as a nation as a church, that we can't even find unity in the very simplistic of the gospel. We can't. Because there are so many man-made agendas and so many man-made rules that are keeping the kingdom of God 
from coming to here on earth and feeling our, you know, we, people are, compl they're not complaining. Well, some are, but they're saying, well, you know, we ain't have revival. You know why we don't have revival? It's because there's a verse in the Bible that talks about we need to repent. We have to have repentant hearts. And that means we got to turn from our wicked ways. Yes, church people, not just the worldly people are wicked. The people in the church do some wicked things. They say some things that are wrong. They say some things that are hurtful. We need to recollect and we need to make things right with our brothers and sisters. That's scriptural. And we need to make it right so that people can see what it looks like to have a repentant heart. So that Jesus can be edified and glorified. It ain't about us. It ain't about me. It's about Jesus. He's the one. He's the true one that deserves all the glory and all the honor. And we're missing it. We're giving glory and honor to man. And we're giving glory and honor to man's agenda. We are giving glory and honor to man's ways. And never since the beginning of the word of God, the Bible, and since the beginning of time, there has been men and women trying to do it their way. And there's only one way, and that's through Jesus. God, help our hearts to break for what breaks yours. Help us, God, to really know the truth of the gospel. And help us, God, not to add anything to it. And help us not to take anything away from it. Take it for what it is. And help us to love one another like you do. First of all, let us love you with all of our heart. And help us to love others as you love us and as we love ourselves. In Jesus' holy name, he is worthy of all praise. Thank you, and I hope this blesses somebody's heart.